Hey kids, and welcome back to this week's Kid Life Midweek Bible Study. Man, I'm glad you guys are here. Happy New Year, kicking off a new series called Remote Control, where we're learning about self-control, which is choosing to do what you should even when you don't want to. So we're going to dive into this. Are you guys ready to have some fun? Are you guys ready to sing? All right, up on your feet. Let's count it down. Here we go. What can you control? Hmm. A paintbrush, a video game, a basketball, a drone, oh, a mixer. Yikes. All of these things can be a little tricky to control, but with practice, you can get really good. But you know what's the toughest thing to control? You. Some days, it feels like your thoughts, your words, and your actions are all running away with you. But with God's help, you can learn to control you. It starts with inviting God into your thoughts, planting His words in your heart, stopping to think before you speak, choosing to reflect before you act. Through the power of God's Spirit, you can speak and act in a way that shows love to others and to God. You can choose every day to live His way. That's why showing self-control is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Whenever I'm in need and I'm looking for help, God, you're always there for me. Wherever you lead me, I can follow you. God, you're always there for me. Oh, God, you're always there for me. Help me believe you know what's best for me. I feel it in my soul When you are in control I got one life to live And I wanna live it your way Oh yeah I do what I should do When you help me choose I got one life to live And I wanna live it your way Oh yeah I got one life to live And I wanna live it your way Oh yeah One, one, one life to live And I wanna live it your way Whenever I'm lost and I don't know where to turn God, you're always there for me Wherever I go, you're always by my side God, you're always there for me Oh, God, you're always there for me So help me believe you know what's best for me
We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Christmas is and over. A happy New Year. And 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 a Happy New Year. New Year and a happy 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 And a happy new year, 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 and a happ
What up, Stooge? What up, Stooge? I like that. <laughs> Come on in. Yeah, <laughs> it, oh, you don't great. need a seat. He's too cool to sit down in a chair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so who are you and what do you know? Yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, <clears throat> I'm Joel. What do I know? More than these clowns. Uh, <clears throat> clowns. I love the circus. Don't you, John? Absolutely. <laughs> so Joel is a troll. Yeah. And you know what you aren't? A rocket scientist. Oh. <laughs> no, just, you know, Joel basically insults people on the internet and sometimes in real life. And I just tell people how it is. And if they can't handle the truth. Sorry, Stooges. Oh, the truth, okay. What kind of truth is that, Joel? That Brandon starts with a B and so does a B. Oh, oh, oh. okay. You think I'm buff? I mean, it's nice of you. I have been working out, so I'm surprised anyone I mean, anyone buff knows. as in buffoon. Because clown is too kind a word for you. Uh -uh. Looks like somebody's about to explode. Like a bee. <laughs> Beautiful. Inflated. Colorful. All right, that's it. Get out. You, you, you don't get to just come in here with your beady little eyes. Get out. You don't just get to come in here with your little beady eyes. I would rather, I would rather play with a yo-yo than to have to look at your face for 30 more seconds. <laughs> Do we have to try again? No, no, not right now. Thank you. It's Bible story time with Kellen. Great. Kellen! Happy New Year! Happy New Year to you! Hey, what story do you got to kick off the new year? It's a wild one. Oh, great way to start. Take it away. Our story today comes from the book of Luke. It's where Jesus is tempted by the devil in the desert. What is a... Oh boy. Did someone say Jesus and the devil? Ho oh, ho, I think we're gonna need some help telling this story from me, Mouth Solomon, and my peach of a brother-in-law, Greg. I prefer nectarines. Whatever, Greg, hit it. Glad you came. Glad you're here. I know it's getting late, but never fear. We'll give a blow by blow of the Bible story on the Melv Solomon story recap. All right, Kellen, do that thing you do. Okay, I guess we're doing this. <laughs> After Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River, the Holy Spirit led him to the desert where he spent. 40 days without eating anything. And that's when the devil showed up and tried to tempt Jesus. The devil said, if you are the son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Turn a stone into bread? Oh, that's cold. I got to sing about this one. Hit it, Greg. 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 See, babies have fuzz and I don't like fuzz. What? You've been hitting those overnight shopping channels again, haven't you, Greg? Mm -hmm. I knew it. <laughs> Play the song. Mm. <laughs> That's the one. When you haven't eaten for 40 days and you're craving a hoagie with mayonnaise, take my advice, don't eat a rock. It doesn't matter how much salt you put on it. So what happened next, Kelathon? Did Jesus give in? Actually, no. When the devil tempted Jesus, Jesus fought him off by quoting a verse from the book of Deuteronomy. He said, it is written, man must not live only on bread. You see, Jesus used something he learned to help him have self-control. But the devil wasn't through yet. Next, he led Jesus up to a high place. And in an instant, he showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world. The devil said, I will give you all their authority and glory. 
If you worship me, it will all be yours. Ooh, that's temptation number two. And have I got a song for that? Hit it, Greg. 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 No headache, mangoes. Enough with the fruit, Greg. Play the tune. Now we're talking. I knew you had it in you, Greg. <laughs> The world's got lots of kingdoms. Who's in charge? Who's in charge? Don't think I'd want to be king. That would be hard, would be hard making laws and other stuff. I think I'd rather just be an entertainer. Bow down and worship the devil. Now I know Jesus didn't fall for that one, right? Calisthenics. You're right, Melv. Jesus had spent his life learning scripture and growing in wisdom. So, when the devil tried to get Jesus to bow down and worship him, Jesus was ready with a verse. He said, It is written, Worship the Lord your God. He is the only one you should serve. Again, Jesus showed self-control. But there was one last temptation. This devil guy won't give up. I know, right? This time, the devil led Jesus to Jerusalem and had him stand at the highest point of the temple. And the devil said, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. Then the devil quoted from the book of Psalms. He said, It is written, The Lord will command his angels to take good care of you. The devil's using the Bible? How is that fair? It wasn't fair. But Jesus didn't fall for it. For a third time, Jesus showed self-control. When the devil tempted Jesus to throw himself off the temple, Jesus said, Scripture says, do not test the Lord your God. Then the devil left Jesus until there was a better time. Boom! I love that self-control. Hit it, Greg. Greg! Greg! No, pineapples are not apples! Fix your glasses, Greg. Uh, Play the tune. What? Uh, Greg, uh, how dare you? How dare you? You know how I feel about that song. No. Stay down. All the way down. Mango down. What happened next, calculator? Um... Yeah, so we're talking about how Jesus showed amazing self-control. Are, are you okay, Greg? Oh, yikes. I get it now, Kellen. Jesus kept control of himself that whole time, and here I am, exploding on Greg for one little song. Oh, I got a lot to learn. Greg. 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 Come on. Come on out here, buddy. I'm sorry. You think, you think we can play one last song? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. That a boy. Oh, yeah. Now we're talking. When I think about what's not good for me, like eating 40 donuts before the clock strikes three, yelling at my friend Gregory, the things that add up to catastrophe. I gotta find a way to do what Jesus does. He makes it look as simple as a bee goes buzz. We can ask him for help and keep getting better. And Greg, I'm sorry, I'm gonna knit you a sweater. What? Oh, yes! My love sweaters. Back to you, Caledonna. Thanks, Melv. So, what'd you guys think? What a wild story. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's amazing that Jesus knew just what to say. Yeah. Right? It was like Jesus was prepared for the devil's temptations. With all the scripture and wisdom he had learned throughout his whole life, it made Jesus ready to do the right thing. And that's why I think it's important for all of us to learn the things that God wants to teach us by reading our Bible or by learning from experience or by listening to the wisdom of people God has put in our lives. We may not need what we learn today, 
but it could prepare us for something we don't see in the future. I wish I'd learned that yesterday. <laughs> Thanks, Kellen. No doubt. Later, guys. I did not have self-control today, John. Well, I had more control of you than you did. Yeah, I should have been more prepared. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to do the right thing. And that's true for everyone. It is? Yeah. Reveal the question. When is it hard to do the right thing? Hmm. Okay, maybe when you're supposed to be doing your homework, but you'd rather play video games. Or when a friend wants you to do something you know you shouldn't. Or maybe when or you're- maybe when you know someone who's always so mean and, and he, he makes you want to scream and throw things because he just refuses to act like a normal human being. It's hard to do the right thing around people like that. Self-control can be hard, for sure. So get ready now for what you might face later. And we'll see you next time on the so-so, the so-and-so. Okay, I can do that better. Okay. Oh, okay. So get ready now for what you might face later. And we'll be back with you back here back again. Mm -hmm. So get ready now for what you might face later. So and so show next time. Be here. Guess that's the take. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> ah, did that look like a brain? Yeah, why not? Here, try this on. You never look better, Greg. Oh, I'll be honest. Normally, I, there's a hole for my head <laughs> to come out. Here, more mango. You bet. Oh, okay. Yeah, there, there you go. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that was a great refresher of our story from this past Sunday. Now, again, the story was about making choices. So let's talk about this a little bit more. Let's review with some questions, all right? So who was making the choices in today's story? Yeah, it was Jesus. But no matter how Jesus was tempted, he always seemed to make the right choice. Agree? Of course. So what did Jesus rely on to help him make the best choice? What did Jesus rely on to help him make the best choice? Exactly, the Bible, scriptures, all right? So if Jesus relied on the words of scripture to show self-control, whose words do you think you and I can rely on to help? Let me give you a hint. There's more than one right answer. All right, let me give you just a few, okay? The Bible, our parents, small group leaders, our coaches, our teachers. See, all of those people have words that can help us, words that we can rely on to help us when we got a tough decision to make. Speaking of decisions, have you ever been tempted to do what isn't right? Yeah, what happened? <laughs> Don't worry, you won't get in trouble. Yeah, it didn't turn out so great, did it? Well, what are some of the ways then that you and I can be sure that we're ready to do the right thing? Again, there may be more than one right answer here. <laughs> yeah, we could read the Bible. We can rely on the Holy Spirit. We can listen during church. We can participate during our small group times. We can pray. See, there's a whole list of things there that you and I can be sure that we're ready to do the right thing. And speaking of tools that can help us be ready to do the right thing, we've got our memory verse this month. It's 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, just the first part of that verse. It says, God's power has given us everything we need to live a godly life. So let's commit that to memory this month. It's going to be an awesome month, and I'm excited that you guys are choosing to kick off the new year by participating in Kid Life and being there in our lesson on the weekend. So guys, until next time, right hand up in the air, high five. I'll see you soon.